The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee through the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they besought him to lay his hand upon him. And taking him aside from the multitude privately, he put his fingers into his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And he charged them to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Today we're blessed with a curious little passage from Mark's Gospel, in which Jesus goes far out of his way to heal a man who is deaf and mute, and then tells him to be quiet, which sounds a little strange when you look at it that way. Now, for those familiar with the geography described, Mark opens with a little teaser. Jesus, he says, returned from Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, through the Decapolis. So, starting in Tyre, going to Galilee, through Sidon. Now, Tyre is up in the north. Galilee is south of that, but Sidon is up north of both of them. So for a comparison, imagine if I told you that Bishop Reed was returning from Chicago to Fort Worth by way of Calgary. Well, we would all be asking, what's going on up in Canada? What's, what's, why is he going so far out of his way? Rather than just give the location, I think Mark wants to intrigue us. He wants us to ask, why is Jesus going so far out of his way? What is he up to? The answer, of course, is that there is a man in the region who is deaf, who is mute, and who has a rendezvous with destiny. And Jesus' reputation has apparently preceded him, even in this largely Gentile area. Mark tells us that they, perhaps the man's family and friends and neighbors, they brought the deaf man to Jesus to be healed at least to be prayed for by this holy man, this prophet. But Jesus is the one who headed in the opposite direction of his destination so that he could find and minister to this person. And I think that's lesson number one, that Jesus will go out of his way, even for the individual. To be sure, he saw and ministered to many people along the way. But make no mistake, Jesus went out of his way to heal this one man. But then we're talking about the God who loved us so much that he came down from heaven just to save you and me. Another important element of the setting that Mark describes is that Jesus is traveling through this largely Gentile territory. The Decapolis was a pagan region of city-states imbued with Greek culture. It was a place where the word of God was no longer heard or spoken, even though it was in the region of Palestine, the Holy Land. It had been drowned out by a cacophony of false doctrines and opinions, blasphemies and lies, temptations and bad morals. As as typified in this one man, Jesus is on a mission to make that word of God be heard again. And this is exactly what God does in our own time and place. We also live in a land where people have become somewhat deaf to the word of God. Where it's no longer heard, it goes unspoken. We need to hear God again and to speak his message again. For you generally don't say what you first don't hear. Hear. 
And St. Augustine pointed out how since Jesus is the Word made flesh, not just what he says, but also what he does, is heaven's message speaking to us. And so we need to pay attention to both things, what he says and what he does. So let's look at what Jesus does in this passage. First notice how Jesus pulls the man aside to a private place. The analogy is us being here today, pulled aside from the secular world, away from the chatter of the world, to a sacred space, a space consecrated to God's words and God's actions. Maybe there's someone in your life that you can pull aside to a place like this. If they come to a quiet place, a place that is still, a place where the word is spoken and where the word is revered, they might hear something from God for the first time or hear the old word that they've needed to hear again for a long time. And then notice Jesus touches him. This is one of the few times that we get that note, not just something to say to him, but Jesus touches him. And that personal touch of the Lord is very important in this passage. Of course, many others had been previously touched by Jesus' words, or even touched by the word of mouth about Jesus and his wondrous deeds. But this deaf man experienced the personal, physical touch of God, one of the senses that he still had in full power. And is there not a parallel also when we come to the altar rail? Ephraim the Syrian, a fourth century deacon and poet and theologian, once wrote, That power which may not be handled came down and clothed itself in members that may be touched, that the desperate might draw near to him, that in touching his humanity they may discern his divinity. At that moment with fingers that may be touched, he touched the Godhead which may not be touched. So Jesus brought the man to a, a private place, and he took his fingers and he stuck them in the man's ears. And then Jesus touched the man's tongue with his own saliva. He made contact with those places that needed healing. Then he looked up to heaven, and with a prayerful sigh, he simply said, Ephatha, the word who spoke creation into existence, when he said, let there be light, sighed over this poor man, and in his own native dialect said, be opened. This was the Messiah, the one who restores sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and speech to the mute, as Isaiah foretold. And Mark deliberately chose that one unique term from Isaiah about the mute, who received their speech again. Now, I'm sure this man had a lot to say after having his hearing and speech restored. As soon as the stunned silence had passed, I'm sure he at least joined his friends in praise and celebration. He and his friends had a little trouble keeping quiet about this miracle, of course. And this recurring instruction from Jesus about remaining silent to those who were healed in Mark's gospel is referred to as the messianic secret. The way Mark tells the gospel story, Jesus is not fully understood until after his death on the cross. When the centurion says, surely this man was the son of God, it's the unveiling of a long-held mystery about the Messiah. The people had their preconceived notions about who and what the Messiah was, but for none of them, even for the closest disciples, was the Messiah a suffering servant who atoned for their sins through this shameful death of the cross. Throughout history, we've had a tendency to make God in our own image. We imagine a God who is exactly what we think he ought to be, rather than try to discern who God really is, the God we really need, who's really there, but in his goodness, God gave us a Messiah on his terms, not on ours. In the liturgies of the ancient church, there was a ceremony based on this passage. 
At baptism, the priest touched the ears of one to be baptized and said, Ephatha, meaning be opened to hearing the word of God as a Christian disciple. And this miracle is built into our Christian DNA as God's people. And then at confirmation, the bishop, following Jesus' example again, would touch the tongue of the person to be confirmed and say, Ephatha, meaning be open to speaking the truth and love and sharing the gospel as a Christian disciple should do. This miracle is built into the way of life Jesus opens up for us to live into. St. Ambrose, the fourth century bishop in Milan, in his cathedral instructions, explained, open your ears, enjoy the fragrance of eternal life breathed upon you by means of the sacraments. We explained this to you as we celebrated the mystery of the opening, the Ephatha. Everyone who was to come for the grace of baptism had to understand what was to be asked and must remember what he was to answer. This mystery was celebrated by Christ when he healed the man who was deaf and dumb in the gospel we proclaim to you. God has opened our ears to listen to the good news of the gospel. God has opened our hearts to love him and to love one another. God has opened our mouths to speak of his glory and praise him forever. And God is commanding all of us to be open to his word. We are to put aside all of our assumptions and, and presuppositions and be willing to listen and be willing to taught God's way. Is God touching you in a personal way, pulling you aside and making contact and saying, be open, open up. He may want you to be open to acting in new ways, doing new things, getting involved in some new ministry, beginning a new study, meeting new people, making new friends, starting to build a discipline of prayer, being open to sharing the gospel in personal relationships, being open to going out of your comfort zone for God, being open to following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. To others, like this man, God may be touching you and saying, I want you to be silent, because first I want you to listen. That still, small voice of the Holy Spirit is scarcely heard apart from the discipline of silence. And sometimes the noise we make on our own gets in the way of our ability to hear. In today's epistle, James wrote, let every man be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of a man doesn't work the righteousness of God. It could mean I want you to stop and listen to the people around you. Listen to their hurts and fears. Listen to the hatred and the heartache. Listen to the truth of God. Listen to the advice of others. Listen to the call and direction of the Holy Spirit. Step back and encourage others to lead or to serve. At other times, we've perhaps been a little too silent. God may be touching our tongue, saying, be open to saying something nice for a change. Be open to speaking words of encouragement and healing and blessing. Be open to speaking up for the truth or speaking up for the defenseless around us. There are a hundred different things that God may be saying to us today as he touches us with his grace and calls our hearts and minds to be opened up. That encounter will be as unique an individual as each of us, as it was for that one individual who had a rendezvous with Jesus in the gospel today. And what God is telling me is for me, and what God telling, is telling you is for you. Our part is to be opened, to listen, to be silent, to obey. And the more God works through us to build up his mystical body and be in this community, touching the lives of those around us. May Jesus, the Christ, the anointed of God, who makes the blind see and the deaf hear and the mute speak, touch your life this day in the very way that you need it most.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.